Welcome to the Extra Lucky Podcast. I'm Taryn. And I'm Jess. And uh, we just wanted to welcome you to our first ever episode. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's loud. <laughs> so we thought we'd use this episode so you could get to know both of us, and we could also talk about some of the things that we'll be doing on the pod. Um, but before we get into any of that, we wanted to thank our first ever sponsor. <laughs> Um, the Olivia brand, who has been a wonderful friend of ours. If you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see we're both wearing pieces from Olivia, but you'll you probably also will see it scattered throughout our social media. But Olivia makes radiant clothing inspired by artistic expressions of people with disabilities. Every collection begins by transforming the artwork of creators with disabilities into bold prints and embroidery across vibrant dresses, bold tops, and unique sweaters. Each creator is paid for their artwork, and 10% of every purchase is donated to their nonprofit art therapy program, providing lasting impact for generations of creators to come. Inside each garment is a scannable tag, allowing wearers to see, experience, and share the human story behind their clothes and the direct impact they've made. A. Livia gives purpose and voice to the previously unheard, showcasing the many talents of people with disabilities and pushing the fashion industry further towards inclusivity. Their spring collection features artwork by Victoria Kresny, a talented creator with Down syndrome who participates in art therapy at Gigi's Playhouse in NYC. Get 25% off for being a listener using code ELM25. Yay! We love Olivia. So what we've prepared today is a bunch of questions, and we're just going to pull them out, not knowing what the question is that we're going to ask each other. And I don't even know what the questions are because you did yes, this. Yes. Because so, that was her job for the week. We thought that would be a great way <laughs> uh, to get to know each of us. Um, but at a high level, we're both the co-founders of Extra Lucky Moms, now known as ELM. Um, we met in 2020 uh, online. Not in person, online. Online. We didn't house. meet in person until 2021, but mm -hmm. we both had children with Down syndrome and decided to create ELM to create an inclusive space for the disability community because currently there's all these silos and um, you know as par as parents who have now friends who have all sorts of different disabilities we thought why are we putting ourselves in different buckets and why aren't we celebrating advocating and you know there's strength in numbers so that's what we're trying to do here with ELM so we celebrate all disabilities this podcast will celebrate all different types of stories people you know, on a disability journey, or maybe not even, yeah. but who have a, a story that can inspire our community. So we really want to just focus on differences, I think, here. Yeah. And obviously disability will be, be, the, be disability will be the theme throughout. <laughs> but we'll be Don't hear us do that a lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> we're, yeah. <laughs> we're real over here. But it'll be all about differences. If that's a medical difference, a disability, or an advocacy, you know, initiative that is near and dear and marginalized that we want to spotlight we're gonna we're gonna do that yeah so let's, should we get started get it. <laughs> you want to ask the first can question? i go first like yeah. i'll ask you okay yeah. okay first question it's oh my god this is like a hard one to start with it's like a it's like a heavy one okay do you want to start yeah. with that no so oh, up. no i don't Switch actually it up. It up. okay oh this is perfect way to okay. jump in okay what taylor swift song describes your life right now <laughs> Maybe you need to calm down. <laughs> no, if I jokes aside, uh, I think a song that's really been resonating with me lately is uh, "Enchanted." I was enchanted. Yeah, to uh, meet. she'll do the singing. I Wait, who singing. were you enchanted to meet, Taryn? Yeah, I just think you know this this whole world, like everywhere I turn, is something new and sparkly oh and gosh. inspiring. And yeah, that's so know. true. So. I feel like you and I have had this crazy awakening this year, even just from January 1st. I know. The people we've been put in contact with, it's obviously started since, you know, we started yelling. Yeah. Those opportunities have, have been there. But, like, I think we've really leaned into the universe yeah. and that it's guiding us, our angels, our spirit guides, or whatever you want to call it. Is, yeah. You know, they're very much here with us, and it's great. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah. Do I answer the question now, no. too? Oh, no. No, no I answer the new question. Oh, another good one. No, no. What could you give up, coffee or wine? Coffee. <laughs> so one word answer right there. Cheers. <laughs> I actually feel like I couldn't give up coffee. I take Adderall, so that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get waked up. Waked. I get woken up by 10 milligrams every morning. There so you go. So Coffee, you're fine. You know, I can live without that. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
What is your go-to feel-good show? Friends. It's always I Friends. That. You and Raph love Friends. We both, watched right? it, I think it's been like 15 years that we watch it, like, at, you know, put it on at bedtime, put a sleep timer on, and like, it's just always, it's timeless for me. It's also, you can like watch any episode alone. Yeah. You know, it's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's like Frasier, Seinfeld, those kinds of like exactly. shows, you just pop in. It's just comfort. It's yeah. Fun. How yeah. many times do you think you've seen it through? Oh my god. 20. <laughs> 20 times. I mean, I, like, I would think, yeah. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. You guys went to the, like, friends thing. The friends experience, the experience of the city. Yeah. It was during COVID, so we had to, like, I, I'm like, I want to go back and, like, take fun pictures where yeah. I'm not wearing a mask. <laughs> it's like, so you're, like, smiling at the famous buzzer, and I'm like, mm-hmm. smiling with your yeah. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. That's a good And who, okay, like, can I ask another question about yeah. friends really quick? I don't know the rules that you've created here, but. No, there's okay, no. Push the boundaries. If you, like, could pick your favorite friend's character. Yeah. Who would, because that's a really hard question. Yeah. I, um, there's things I like about all of them, but I think if I had to like pull somebody's personal story into my decision, I would say Chandler and like yeah. Matthew Perry. And not like I, I think I would have said that, you know, before he passed away, but, you know, having read, I didn't finish his book yet because it takes me like two years to read a book, but like I read a big yesterday. chunk of his book and, just that um, him taking his, you know, things that happened to him and things that happened in his life and turning it into a way to help other people, it was just really inspiring. And I like to root for the underdogs. So Me too. I just, yeah. He's also the funniest one on the show. Yeah. That helps. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. His, you know, improv and all that stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. I love his bloopers. Okay. What experience with disability did you have before your daughter, before Adeline? Oh, gosh. Well, I didn't really have much. Um... Growing up, you know, there's no one really in my family who has a disability. I mean, the closest thing I had was myself with a learning disability because I have ADHD. Um, hence the Adderall <laughs> comment. But um, I think that my, my first memory of knowing someone had a disability was in middle school. Um, my best friend, Ellen, her brother had Down syndrome. I'm actually still in touch with them on Facebook. And um, mm-hmm. I watched Danny's updates and... He's so inspiring, and his mom is lovely. And he had this beautiful spirit and all of these things, but his diagnosis, like, really terrified me, Mm -hmm. just the fact that it was something so unknown to me, Mm -hmm. and it made me a little uncomfortable, to be completely honest. Yeah. Looking back, obviously, I feel sad that that's how I felt, but I just didn't know. Yeah. You know? And there was also, like, it was a very different time, too. You know, we advocate very differently now, not only for disabilities, but for all types of things, totally. mental health, you know, whatever, um, community support, parenting, or everyone's like out and talking about stuff now. Yeah. Back then people didn't like talk about things like that. And so I don't necessarily know if it was even brought up. Like, I don't even think I even mentioned it to my mom. It was just something we just like, okay, I went to Ellen's house and Danny was always there. He'd always give me a big hug and he was yeah. so sweet. And then his mom would like make sure he was out of our way. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was my first experience with yeah. the disability. Mm-hmm. Clearly grown a lot since then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is the biggest thing you have learned from being in the disability community? I think just to um, have a completely open mind mm-hmm. and give people a chance to, you know, show who they are. And I think also reframing reframing what someone's disability means in their life like as far as like we've talked about this before like where we you know I might have previously said saw someone in a wheelchair and thought like oh they can't walk right and instead now the way I look at it is they use a wheelchair to Mm -hmm. get around you know I'm not like focusing on the can't or the loss or whatever because I've just realized that how these things that like we don't have are just because we're comparing them to whatever the norm is, right? Right. Whatever the societal norm is that happens. And it doesn't mean that because somebody's in a wheelchair or because somebody, you know, I've felt this with, with Raya before, you know, because obviously people with Down syndrome can be a little bit harder to understand because of, you know, speech delays, but also because of the muscle tone. Mm -hmm. Right. So And I, you know, (laughs) where I see my daughter cognitively at, you know, the level of a three and a half year old, I know that people can understand her. And I realize like, 
that is something that I probably would have looked at in the past and thought and made a judgment about cognition. Right. You know, and made a judgment about what they had to say or if their voice maybe was of value. So I think just kind of looking deeper mm -hmm. and not, you know, making a judgment call about something. Or someone. assumptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. If you could go back to someone you lost and share something, what would it be? Karen, <laughs> why did I get this one? <laughs> uh, Do you want uh, to switch it? Or? No, it's okay. Um, no, it's okay. I have I have been lucky enough, very humbled to know that, I, you know, a lot of, some, some people in my life have lost a lot of loved ones. I still have both my maternal grandparents. My dad's parents passed away. Um, but we weren't as close to them. Mm -hmm. They lived in Sweden, and so that, and they, you know, was much younger when they passed. So, it, and then my, my farmer passed away after, you know, we kind of knew it was coming. So these, mm -hmm. like, they were all losses that I had sort of somewhat some right. control over, emotional re reactions, I guess. Um, but, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so my best friend, Ashley, who's mother terry we co-dedicated the book to mm -hmm. along with your mother who mm -hmm. is another angel up there um she passed away a few days after ashley uh, had her firstborn daughter molly and it was a shock horrible shock and at the time i was slowly starting my like advocacy journey yeah. we had i think started extra lucky at that point right mm -hmm. Um, so clearly I'd really started. Well, just. Oh, we had just, I think. Yeah. She passed and, oh no, we started it was it right after. after my mom. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It was like that year. That's right. I think it was right after we started ELM. But we had like talked about things. Yeah. And then I also think it was the push after her passing. Like, okay, I got to do something. Yeah. But when Terry passed away, I felt so much remorse, obviously because she was gone, but because I didn't lean on her mm -hmm. the way that I wished I had. Yeah. Just for context, um. Ashley's sister, Danielle, is also one of our angels in heaven. She had a very, very rare chromosomal abnormality. They never really knew the diagnosis. And it's a big part of Ashley's life. And as her friend of over 18 years, I've it was a big part of Ashley mm -hmm. and a big part of her narrative and her story. And so when I had Adeline, Terry was one of the first people's peoples. Terry was one of the first people I really confided in. And she just like listened to me talk mm -hmm. and like just throw up my emotions on her over the phone for like two hours. Yeah. Um, and I talked to her for that, that one time really. And I just didn't lean on her as, as I should have, or if I wished I had, I guess. Yeah. Um, I know she is guiding us and she's a huge part of this whole community. I mean, the, the crazy God winks or Terry winks, I guess yeah. people want to call <laughs> Your mom winks yeah. are crazy, especially when it comes to like the cover of our, of our book. And, yeah. you know, maybe we have a whole episode about the book and we yeah, can talk yeah, about yeah. that then. But I really wished I had um, gone deeper with her yeah. because I would have loved to share that with her. Also, so I could have been an even better friend to Ashley. But there is beauty in it because Ashley has since taken on that experience and like she holds space for me in the same way that her mom does obviously from a different perspective because mm -hmm. she's a sister not the mother yeah. yeah um so I don't know if I like regret it or wished I'd said something I guess I just wished I had had the wherewithal to you know ask for more support and and ask for more questions and yeah and learn more like I wish I could know how it was in the 80s like what did you go through yeah you know mm -hmm. I, just because we've heard so many stories from that time and we know we're still dealing with BS in yeah. this community, totally. you know, of ignorance. So, so yeah, that's my answer. A long-winded emotional one, but that's it. Love, love it. it. <laughs> love it. Wait, I almost want to guess this. Okay, if you could live anywhere, where would it be? Can okay. I guess? You can guess. And then you tell, obviously, your truth. Yeah. Okay. New Jersey. But also, if you, like, could take all your people with you, Italy. So... <laughs> Uh, like, I, I wrong? feel like a little bit. Ah! Well, Italy, I would love to have, like, a vacation. Oh, home. yes. You know. Duh. Um, if I had to pick, like, another country, I would pick Australia. Because I studied what? abroad there. Really? And you, know, you studied abroad there, right? No, you and then we went on our honeymoon there. So okay, it just holds right. so many memories. And yeah. also, like, 
I mean, I'm sure it has issues like our country, like, that I obviously don't know as, like, not somebody who's living there, who has, like, lived there full time. But um, the way of life there was just so much more in line with how I feel like we should all, like, it was, Mm -hmm. like, you know, working to live, not Mm -hmm. living to work, you know, kind of thing. So, um, I don't know, 80% of the population lives within an hour of the beach. Like, why wouldn't, you know, (laughs) winter is summer. (laughs) I think that would be If you live there right now. But I would love to, like, also have a, you know, villa on a lake in Italy. Oh, (laughs) yes. Maybe that'll be our, like, our uh, convention location. There we go. There we go. All right. What's a misconception that you had before that feels ridiculous now? Oh, my gosh. Like, all of them. All of them. I, I thought so many bad, like, assumptions. I just, I mean, I literally thought... My life was over right. at this point. Like, I was so devastated. Matt and I were unwell. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, well, there goes everything we ever thought we knew. Yeah. Life is over. I'm going to be this old, gray, haggard mom. You know? The only haggard thing about me are the, is the fact that my bangs are still growing out. Oh, this is like a <laughs> choice I've made. It's very difficult. Um, no, I feel like everything. I mean, I, I also think the thing you spoke about earlier uh, in the other question I asked you is, like, this assumption. I think that's the biggest thing. Like, assuming people that are nonverbal don't understand you yeah assuming people that are in a wheelchair um maybe use it 24 7 and you feel so sorry for them and people with disabilities are incredible and a lot of times they're so much more cognitive one time i saw somebody talking to somebody in a wheelchair like loud yeah like loudly and i was like wait what (laughs) they still have their ears why what are you making to hear hear just because they're like i don't know yes that's that's so like you don't know what you don't know and i just yeah I think that would be what I would say, that I just assumed less than cognition, yeah. less than ability. Mm-hmm. What's the hardest thing about being an extra lucky mom right now? Hmm. Hmm, right now. You know, I do feel the gap widening a little bit with, mm-hmm. you know, as Ray gets a little bit older, which is an ex- it's expected and it's okay. Um, but I just think about how by now... Like, my kids at almost four years old were, like, having a lot more play dates mm-hmm. and just more, like, interactive at them, I guess. And Raya's, like, very interactive with her sisters and in the classroom and all that stuff. But sometimes, like, when we've tried to do play dates, like, she's like, yeah, I need, I'm going to have my space right. and stuff like that. So, which, that could have been her personality all along. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think it's some of the social stuff that... I'm starting to see are going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Like the way that all of my kids, like, I don't know, sometimes I go to pick up and one of them's like, Oh, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there and whatever. Sometimes I can't picture that, Mm -hmm. you know? So thinking about that and thinking about how socially things might be a little bit challenging for her is kind of like what's weighing on my mind right Right now at the moment, because I feel like we're otherwise like, thank goodness in a little bit of a limbo period you know, we've been for IEP round and like not a major change for another year or so. Um, as far as that's concerned, like medically, we're sort of in a limbo, knock on wood for the moment. Um, so yeah, I think it's more of that. But and again, these are things where I make this projection and then they're better than I thought. I know. <laughs> but it's hard but to if not they're not, that. it's almost like you're kind of protecting yourself exactly. emotionally if it is going to work out the way that you are assuming it might. Right. And that's just the human experience. Exactly. But you've taught me to stay present. I am, you know, and I'm trying to do that. I would say potty training. Oh, yeah. I know. I haven't even. <laughs> I haven't even gotten I literally there. put her underpants under the huggies this morning. So I was like, I don't want to deal with it. But I, I do know. also want you to feel that you get wet. Right. <sighs> anyway. It'll happen. I digress. It'll all happen. All right. What is the perfect diagnosis delivery in your mind? my gosh <laughs> well what like in my like personal experience or like anybody just generically speaking uh, i i think generically speaking like if i think that okay so this is two parts i'm going to talk about what i think people should say and then i think what I, i'm going to share what people should maybe consider before saying it mm-hmm. so i understand that in an emergency situation let's say you give birth and your baby comes out and there looks to be medical condition or potential diagnosis I understand that 
doctors have to react yeah. and protect the baby, protect the mom. However, I think that that should be like considered next, if that makes sense. Like, I just think that practitioners see diagnosis first because that's their job. Yeah. You know, they literally diagnose people, give them medicine, or they diagnose people, give them therapy, give them support. But they're people first. They're children. They're brand new babies first. Or they've been trying to find a diagnosis forever yeah. and they're finally getting that information. So I think, you know, and everyone has uh, words and narratives that they feel, you know, resonate with them. So this is what I would say. Uh, you know, my obviously I have birth experience and I would have liked to have met my child, mm -hmm. touched my child, uh, and not have had my husband meet his daughter and have him meet the diagnosis first. Yeah. And, you know, because it wasn't necessary. Yes, did she have low sat, you know, saturation? Sure. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like a crazy emergency. Right. And I just think that people need to take a breath. And remember that we are human beings and that these are babies. Yeah. And it's it's such a beautiful gift to bring life into this world. And I just think that everyone is so, like, overwhelmed, obviously, by a diagnosis. But, like, if we really dumb it down, it's, we're all the same. We're all made up of the same matter from a star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think just leading with empathy and re and remembering that, you know, these are people that are they're people first. Yeah. So, and, and I don't, I don't love the word, sorry. Yeah. I also don't like the word congratulations, especially yeah. I wouldn't have liked that because I didn't feel very congratulated at the time. Yeah. I felt devastated. I think I would have appreciated making sure I was with my partner mm -hmm. when the diagnosis was delivered and vice versa. God bless him. He was all by himself and yeah. he put that on and then he related to me so that, you know, I really can't ever thank him for that. Um, but yeah, I, I just think empathy first, making sure we're recognizing that it's the human experience that we're yeah. considering. In I, agree. I agree. What is the craziest thing you have experienced on this journey so far? <laughs> Probably the two. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you remember that day. It was, I, I, I remember being so anxious, not about going on TV, but because I was like, there's no way this is happening. Yeah. Like I, until it actually happened, I sort of didn't believe that it was going to happen. Because totally. I was like, something, some breaking news is going to come on. And and you kept, and, like, warning me. You were like, no. You know. And also, also my Amanda, own, my but, but, Yeah. But also, Amanda was, too. She was very, like, the producer, for anyone, everyone listening, who we worked with. We love you, Amanda. Um, she was very clear. Right. right? She was like, right. it may not happen that right. day. Right. So just know that. And, we were and like, there were, like, oh. some kind of protest going. I don't remember what political. Uh -huh. Something political. And I was like, oh, that's going to trump us. Like, yeah. that's going to, like... No pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> I didn't actually mean that. But, um, yeah, I was like, there's no way that we're going to be on. So, until I was, like, literally sitting there, and they were recording, I'm like, this is actually... Is that Hoda? Did Hoda just hug me? I know. <laughs> and she hugged you. She, like, cr cradled I me. <laughs> she, like, put her hands around the back of my head, and I was like, can we, like, rock in a rocking chair? <laughs> is that like, a warm blanket? <laughs> Well, and that was the other thing, too. Like, you never know what people are going to be like when you meet them. Like, these people... Because I had been watching the Today Show since, like, you know, that was, like, my thing. Yeah. You know, to, like, in the morning. And especially before the kids were like, can we watch cartoons? You know, totally. I would watch the Today Show. So, you know, you're like, what if what if Hoda's a, a jerk? I know. <laughs> They'd say I never meet your heroes, right? Because you're one of She was absolutely, jerk. spoiler alert, not a jerk at all. She and was, like, literally... And we have of you imagine. getting hugged by her. Yes. Like, and she literally embraced you like a bebe. Yeah. Yeah. So... That was insane. Um, that we were together insane. too when we got the email. Do you remember that? We Tara we, was like, Jessica, check your email. Or, well, no, maybe we weren't, we weren't together. together. But we, we literally on a within call like together. 15 minutes we're on a call. With, yeah. And she's like, nobody's ever replied to me. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, we don't play it cool. No, we're like, they would love to be on the stage with me. This never happens. So we're like, yes, we, we yes. Do you want to do you want to talk now? Do you want to like come to our house? Yeah. Right. Right. What are you doing tonight? We were yeah. literally on a call with her 15 minutes later. Yeah. And just so everyone knows, um, we were not the story starting out. So the producer, Amanda, came to, was doing research for Caregiving Awareness Month and had been Googling, you know, mm -hmm. caregiving in the tri-state area because yeah. they were doing this big story for Today Show. And I guess our SEO was pretty good yeah. because we popped up on Google. And so we were supposed to be a part of a really big story about caregiving and maybe be interviewed for like a snippet. Yeah. We were like, Which yes, we would have totally taken. Oh my gosh, that would have probably been the same answer. Yeah. 
Remember that time we had a snippet on the Today Show? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and then we got on a call with her, and she was, like, so inspired by our stories and the community that she was like, hmm. And then she emailed us the next Monday yeah. and said, you know, we think we'd like to have the story be about you guys yeah. and ELM. And we were like, what? Yeah. And she said, they like sent a crew to our house. The next day. The next day. You know, they were recording. And then they sent a whole crew to my old apartment in Hoboken. And it was still, we were never going to be on, in the studio. It was still just a story. Yeah. Which we were thrilled by. And then we got to meet Hoda. Yeah. And yeah, that's the craziest thing that's ever happened to us. And here we are on the pod. Here we are. Okay, what was your childhood like? That's a very broad question, but I will answer Well... Like, like childhood child, like under 18. Yeah. Okay. So I grew up in North Carolina, but I was born in Sweden. My Sweden. Swedish. I can probably sense that. Swedish. My dad and my mom met in college, and uh, he was a professional soccer player. They moved to Maine. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was a professional yeah. soccer player for uh, Old Dominion University. Well, he played for Sweden as a professional, then went to college, which I don't think is, like, legal now, but hmm. we should edit that out. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure they're not going to come after. I don't think they're going to come after. Um, yeah, so then they got married and they moved to Sweden. And they lived there for like four years. I was born there. And after a year, my mom was like, this is hard. I can't yeah. like, be away from my family. So they moved back. Raising and, children. Yeah, it was yeah. her whole family was in the in the States. So we ended up kind of bouncing around New England, but my mom's from Maine. But we ended up in North Carolina, which was a wonderful, wonderful place to grow up. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of like the community vibes in New Jersey very community focused, but way more spread out, like mm-hmm. no cities. Um, I had a beautiful little childhood, really great memories. We traveled a lot. We, my sister and brother and I are all super, super, super close. And I do think that has something to do with the fact that like, we're all kind of similar people. However, my mom would have this rule where she'd say, if you don't get along with your sibling at the play date, the friend goes home and she yeah. would like stick to it. And it made us figure out how to really get along with each other very early. Yeah. Um, and so that was always my safe haven was coming home. I mean, it still is. Yeah. My own family, but also, like, my sister, brother, my mom. Like, it's my safe haven. Um, but my parents separated when I was in middle school-ish. And that was, like, a tumultuous time. Yeah. Which I can go into another time. They are now very wonderful friends. And everybody's a very beautiful modern family. But it was, like, a really tough of course. high school experience. I also had, like, a little bit of a tough time making friends. Until I found the theater. Yeah. <laughs> um, the theater. And, you know, I ended up kind of pursuing that as a career because I just found myself with those people. Yeah. But I had a really beautiful childhood. I didn't have, you know, anything other than, like, that trauma of my parents getting, separating my, my a very, had very involved grandparents, mm-hmm. wonderful grandparents, um, and a beautiful childhood. But I think that, that the chapter of the divorce and the separation was really hard. Yeah. Um, but I loved growing up in North Carolina. My whole family's still still there, so yes. I have to go visit all the time. <laughs> Whoa. What is your vision for this podcast? These are such good questions. Okay. Ten yeah. out of ten for Tara. I feel like it would be important to share like the where this came from. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, how you're bringing a podcast. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> My brain. I have been kind of in Jess's ear as we, like, plan things for ELM. Like, Mm -hmm. we got to do a podcast. we got to do a podcast. Because if it sort of selfishly, and we've both said this, like, we, I don't don't sit down and watch TV anymore other than watching Friends at night. Yeah. I literally don't watch TV. People are like, have you seen that show? I'm like, no, No. I have not. Um, And I also, like, don't get to, you know, sit and read much. Like, like I said, it takes me a long time to finish a book. However, like, podcasts I listen to all day. Good and I was like, you know what? I'm not unique to that experience, yeah. especially in this community, right? So I'm like, how can we get so much good, inspiring, valuable content to our community in this medium? So I kept saying podcast, podcast, podcast. And <laughs> even like a year ago, bought this mic- these microphones. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like it's happening. And then, it, yeah. you know, and then we were like, Okay, this is going to be one of those things that we would have to teach ourselves to do. And right. We're very good at doing that. But we this felt like a mountain to yes. <laughs> <laughs> But this felt like a mountain to climb yeah. because it's neither of our wheelhouses. Um, and then last summer, we actually met with somebody mm-hmm. who uh, another friend recommended. Um, and we just felt like, okay, this is still probably, we were in the middle of like ramping up a whole bunch of things mm-hmm. on the business side of things. 
so we're like probably still not the time but okay and you know um and then we recorded a podcast with Andy from uh, Sprouting Minds podcast. And at the end, after we were stopped, done recording, she was like, by the way, I'm starting a production company and I want you guys to be my first client. And we were like, we were like I was like, right. okay, this is the sign. Like, yes. this is the sign from the universe. We had known Andy for a while. We, She's you know, such good people. we trusted that she understood the, because that's the, this is the thing with sometimes, like, you don't know if people understand the importance of the messaging and the community and and Andy does. Yeah. So um, we just felt like it was divine intervention. So 100%. Um, my vision for this podcast is that we can bring these impactful stories to our community. We can give our community a chance to get questions answered, mm -hmm. you know, um, and share that messaging. And my hope is that we get the attention of people outside the community yeah. and let other people learn what it's like to be in this community, to be, to feel inspired by people in this community and maybe have their perspective change the way that all of ours have, you know, once we join this community. So well, that was beautifully said. <laughs> I don't have anything to add. <laughs> <laughs> so good. There's our elevator pitch. There's our elevator pitch for sure. Okay. What is your biggest fear about raising a child with a disability? I honestly just don't want her to like get her feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. It is not, I have no like a qualms yeah. about it at all. Like I have embraced yeah. this life. I yeah. think she's the coolest kid ever. Yeah. And you know, I really feel that it, everyone that comes into contact with a person with a difference or disability can learn something. Mm -hmm. I, I feel so be yeah. lucky, extra lucky to have her. Yeah. But I just can't control everything. Right. And it's everybody else that I worry about. Even with my older daughter, who yeah. is typical, like I, you know, she's starting to get into the social interactions where she's getting her feelings hurt. Someone called her yeah, weird yeah, the yeah. other day. Mm -hmm. And it like broke my, like, I don't know what I know. I'm going to do when there's like mean girls. I don't, I won't cut a bitch. <laughs> You're like literally like, wearing your heart outside your is. chest. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I know. And it's, it's, my kids are, my oldest is 12. So we've had the mean girls you yeah know, experience and you know still do I'll sometimes. be leaning on you for that um and it's not look it's not easy and that's every time something happens I'm like oh is this gonna feel even worse when it's Raya who like maybe you know might not realize somebody's being mean to her yeah. I have no idea you know but yeah. that's what I'm most fearful of. me too so we just have to do the good work and keep educating and spreading the message and also, like, the thing that I try to, I know this is your question, but, like, the thing I try to drive <laughs> to my kids is, like, this is probably not about you, mm -hmm. you know. They could, that person could be going through something or having a bad day or maybe their, you know, their home is breaking. Yeah. Like, maybe their parents are splitting up or some mm -hmm. something really big is going on that they're, you know, wanting to tear down people who seem happy or... Yep. Um, so I think just driving home to them to like continue to be kind, yeah. Even if you know maybe mom feels like that that person doesn't deserve it. seriously, but I know, I don't do to lead with kindness and you know not take things to heart. But. Yeah, but that's my fear. Yeah, I get it. Wah wah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is a really good question. Okay. What would you want your legacy to be? Oh my gosh. Um, I want I would my legacy I would hope is my children and how they you know are continuing their journeys you know oh, that's so nice <laughs> well because I'd be like, well I want people to remember me and you're like I hope my kids are nice <laughs> well you're just so sweet because that's like the ripple effect right yeah, like I know and that they but in order for them effect. to have that you have to be such a good person well, that they to. also impact right and you're on your way my but love. I think like I do feel like all of the rest of my kids, like now being in this community, I already see how much it's changed them and impacted them and how they look at the world differently. And, you know, I think that we all have this ability to leave things better than we found them. And, you know, that's all I hope for, for me. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> Who inspires you? Celine Dion. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. She totally does. Oh man, did you see they're putting on a documentary? No. Yeah, about Celine. No, Celine Dion. Um, who inspires me? Oh my gosh, so many people inspire me. I have to pick one person. I just, you know, another question was asked. Yeah. Okay. 
I mean, it would be like so cliche to say Adeline. Right. So I'm not going to say Adeline, but she does inspire me. Um, I would say that you really inspire me. Oh, thank you. And, um, you know, we talk about this a lot, that we have this sort of like universal guiding light, mm -hmm. you know, sharing this journey with us somehow and bringing us along. But I wouldn't be on this journey without you, and I don't think we would be as successful being able to get this messaging out to advocate the way that we do without the trust that mm -hmm. we have. And also, like, the energy that you bring into my life, the, the trust that you provide to me, the warm hug, the space, the creativity, and, you know, all of those things that you offer me, you also challenge me. You, um, I've learned so much as through the way you mother your children, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you have children that are a little older than mine and I, I love to lean on you for advice. Um, and you know, you always have taught me to be present and to find the joy and I've experienced my awakening, you know, this past year. And that really, that fire was really lit because of you and your friendship. You. So you inspire me. Thank you. And if you'd like to continue and tell you, tell me how much I'm there, you're like, it's totally fine. You can totally. Well, I, I would, <laughs> it, it's funny because I, I told you this like last week, you know, I was talking to my husband and he was like, so you guys are such a good combination because you're not good at the same things. Yes. Yeah. And you're also like, you're both like lit up by different things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you've made me like come out of my shell a lot more because <laughs> I'm like this, like, you know, untrusting Jersey girl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not putting myself out there, you know, someone's going to say something about that. Yeah. Um, so you've kind of like showed me like, stop. Yeah. No one cares. No one cares. <laughs> also, you're the only one that cares. Right. You're the only one right. that thinks you're an imposter. Right. You're a brilliant writer. You right. are just a brilliant mind anyways. Right. And what I think is the best is that I obviously was right. Because you've now started sharing. And how many book partnerships have you gotten, girl? Right. I know. Five? I mean, maybe by your time this airs, it'll be well, I think twelve. Is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I believe in you. Thank you. Well, and I think like your like your positivity that you give out. Like I know you you're saying you just recently found that, but like I remember saying you know to you a long time ago, like your southern like is so nice and refreshing because I'll see you be just as like warm and uh, uplifting to like our waitress at Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. Oh, not sponsored. So nice. Not sponsored. Not either. sponsored, but like if you but want to, me. like totally get reach out. Like, and you'll be like, oh, I love your sweater. And like, I know that that made somebody's day. You know what I mean? So like, I try to, you know, think about doing that more because again, I'm like this, you know, Jersey girl who like just doesn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, well, I think you're right. Like Raph was right. Like we really do. I mean, Matt made the joke the other day. He's like, well, who are you married to? Me or Terrence? Yeah. And I was like, honestly, no, I'm just kidding. I love you, baby. Um, no, but I we always make this joke like it's too bad we're not lesbians. Because right, right. We really would be a great parent, but instead, here we are running a business. Yes, and we literally like knock on wood, we've literally never had a fight. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but we're able to challenge each other, which is right nice. with respect. You know, and we yeah. always lead with respect. Yeah. And, um, oh, that was a great question. If you were hosting a benefit and could have any person come and be entertainment, who would it be? Celine Dion. <laughs> That's not your question. <laughs> I mean, I probably should have a better answer for like this community, but I would say Ed Sheeran because his I love Ed Sheeran. his like love Ed Sheeran. performance yeah. ability is like like Ed. If if we ever do a big fundraiser, please come. Please, Eddie. I think you're busy, but um, he's you know. so good. But yeah, like I've we've seen the girls and I've seen him live a couple times, and like you gotta bring me. Up. I know. Does he like know the songs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because oh, yeah. Addie has her favorites now, too, and I'm like, how fun to bring her to a concert. Yeah, I know. She's a little far off on that. But, yeah. You know. Hey, <laughs> the other day we went and played golf in, like, a simulation room, and Addie did not elope, and I was yeah. like, oh, my God. Yeah. Matt and I were, like, talking about it on the way home, like, oh, my God, maybe this is this new chapter. Yeah. That she's not going to just I escape know. down I know. the street with a bag of chips. Right. Which has happened. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What? Oh. And this is great. I'm okay. glad you got this question. Okay. What would be on your celebrity rider? My celebrity rider? Yeah. That's like what you tell people you want in your life. Yeah, like a dressing, dressing room. room. Taco Bell. <laughs> My specific order, double-decker tacos, cream, tomatoes, cheesy pasta potatoes, and a small nacho with a Mountain Dew. Not specific at all. 
uh, Kim Crawford Sauvignon Blanc. Mm-hmm. Um, I would want like a robe, mm-hmm. like a really cozy, like long men's robe. I'm very tall. It needs to be yeah. long. Um, I'd want to make sure that there was like seating and comfortable areas for all of my family mm-hmm. and friends. Like, so if whoever is being invited, like they get up. Like, oh, a so seat. you're throwing a party in the dressing this room. This is a party. Mm-hmm. Like if we're, if, listen, if I ever become famous enough as a freaking writer, like everyone's invited. <laughs> you know me. I'm like, do it all for the long for the ride. The collaboration. <laughs> wow. Um, and then I would have Celine Dion playing mm-hmm. her inspo. I would probably make sure that it was like safe so that Maddie couldn't run away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So she cut the low. I don't know. Like, I just, I'm pretty simple. Like, talk about. She got less than, like, 15 things when she's like, I'm super simple. <laughs> I'm not like, I only want red uh, starburst. Yeah. You know, yeah. which I've heard was on JLo's writer. I, I, I've heard that, like, many times. I have a feeling like that winds up being a rumor, but, you know. Because, honestly, like. I know. It's a little. Simple, They're just, but they are superior to all the but other But it ones. should be Kim Crawford. So, you know, yeah. Like, or Matua. Yeah, but. Kim Crawford. But Kim Crawford. Cut me to a out. We want Kim Crawford's support. <laughs> Sponsorship. Wait, let's see what would be on yours, though. Uh, a very similar thing. See, that's why we're meant to be. Very similar things. Um, maybe just, you know, not. I'm, I'm not as big of a Celine fan. Right. Even though she's lovely. Maybe we just leave her out of the equation. She's lovely. But yeah, a robe. Like, but a big, like, squishy, comfy robe. Yeah, like, like the ones that you get when you're at, like, a hotel. Yeah. And like slippers too, because I have the worst circulation. Yeah. So my feet will be freezing if they don't have slippers and socks. Mm-hmm. Oh, a barefoot dream store jacket. Oh yes, those are good. Mm-hmm. Did you know that they make baby socks now? No. Yeah, my friend Bailey told me. She sent me a picture of her baby in the barefoot dream socks. It's the cutest freaking thing I've seen. Oh my yet. god. Anyway, we digress. All right. Oh, last question. Last question. And maybe actually we both answer this because I, oh, okay. I actually don't know who you you're. After your husband, who was the first person you told about? The Down syndrome diagnosis. Okay. So we had a prenatal diagnosis, as you know. So uh, I found out I was driving in the car with my kids, you know, just as everybody dangerous. wants to find out that their child is going to have Down syndrome. Um, in the car. In the car. Driving your children. Yeah. And I didn't want to give my husband that experience. So I was actually taking them to a dentist appointment, went and did the dentist appointment, and then went home. And he, when he got home from work, I was like, I have to talk to you. Like, we went upstairs in, in in our room, and I told him. And you know, we we knew like we were moving forward, so uh, there wasn't like a huge discussion around that. Even though we hadn't talked about it, but it was you know, um, we both kind of like immediately in that moment were like, all right, we're we'll figure it out, you know. Uh, and then I called my dad. You called your dad? Yeah. Not your mom. My mom, I think my mom was actually in the hospital for bronchitis at the time or something. Oh. I know my parents weren't together. So I called I called my dad, I think because of that reason. And I basically just, he knew we were, he knew something was going on. We were having testing. So I said, you know, they, the baby has Down syndrome. And I just started crying. Right. And, uh, you know, and I said, we're going to have the baby. And he just said, I know you are. I know you are. That's my grandchild. Oh, God. I know. <laughs> oh. So. You need that confidence. Yeah. 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 In those vulnerable moments, you need someone to hold, obviously hold space. Like, in those words, he was still holding space for your grief. But, right. like, he was essentially cementing your beauty and who you are. Yeah. I know you are. Like, yeah. And, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, jeez, so, Louise. So now I, I do need to know yours, though, because I actually don't know. Um, well, so, you know, my birth story is in the book, Dear Mama, so I won't get into all that. But then we're in the recovery room because we had a birth diagnosis. And I just didn't believe it because I had not touched her. Mm-hmm. And there were, we had been done, we'd done so much testing. We did everything. And extra ultrasounds because of my medically complex pregnancy. So I was yeah. like, there's just no way. So she has down. Like, what are you, nuts? You want to eat nuts? What are you, nuts? <laughs> <laughs> and then Matt, like, in the recovery room was like, no, just like, she has Down syndrome. And, like, I need you to just, like, meet me where I'm at right now. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, no, no, no. And then the doctor had come in and was, like, was talking to Matt and saying, like, well, there was this marker that, like, Matt was mm-hmm. like, excuse me? Mm-hmm. What marker? That's a whole other story for another time. And so it kind of, like, hit me that 
she had something. You yeah. know, I still just what didn't want to believe it. But I, I knew something was wrong. And that's in quotations, everyone. There was nothing wrong with her, but that, that was what the, you know, communication yeah. was from everyone around me. Yeah. And I called my mom. You know, my mom is my person. And um, my sister is probably just as close to me as my mom, but I needed my mom. Mm-hmm. You know, we have people in our lives that represent different needs. You're my person when I'm going through something very specific to... Yeah our business or with Adeline or with mothering, I go to my sister for other things, my brother for other things, you know, right. but I needed my mom. And, um, I said, mom. And she was like, what, what's wrong? What's going on? And it was COVID. So no one was in our house. You know, they were all in North Carolina. All right. So you called your mom. So I called my mom and you know, your mom intuition just knows. My mom was like, what's going, what's wrong? And I just said, you know, mom, there's something wrong with our baby. They, they think she has Down syndrome. And I did, probably said it in a very, like, yeah. I'm in an out-of-body experience right. way. And she goes, we're going to love her anyway. Mm. And that was the, the thing that she said. Yeah. And she could have said so many things, right. especially because she came from the same perspective that I did. Mm-hmm. But in that moment, she wanted to make sure that her daughter was yeah. okay. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever really thanked her for that. So thank you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I'm sure she was grieving, too. Oh, gosh. We Same, all went through yeah. so many Yeah. Emotions. My mom struggled with, um, before Rhea came, my mom struggled with the rest of my pregnancy mm-hmm. because of the fact that she, my mom raised her brother, who was disabled, from when I was 10 years old and my grandmother passed away. And my mom lived, she, he was her twin, so she lived in a totally different world right. than I knew Rhea was entering. However, it was really hard for her to let that go. So yeah. she was so worried for me. You know, I remember talking one time about, like, you know, my dad and I were talking about, oh, you know, when she goes to college or whatever. And my mom said, well, what if she doesn't go to college? And I was like, mom, first of all, you have to understand that that's not, you know, a, a that's not a thing that, like, my children have to do for me to love them. Like, right. we're okay either way, but I'm... I can dream for her and it doesn't, you know, but my mom had a hard time like letting go of some of those. She was feeling protective. Of you. Like she didn't want well, you're my her baby. You right. Know? Right. So yeah. I totally understand it, even though sometimes it would be frustrating because I'm of like, course. just be positive. Get on my level. <laughs> I need you to meet me where I'm at. But she's also going through her thing. And she lived this world. Yeah. Like he like made other. the phone call. She did the advocating. She, you know, dealt with people who were not treating her brother well. Like, mm. There was a, you know, it, it was really hard for her to let that world go, yeah. which I get, you know, I totally get it. So, um, yeah, our, our parents, like, do feel, they have to feel this, you know, yeah. protective of us, manage their own grief. Yep. It's fun being a parent. It's a uh, real fun. Yeah. I wouldn't take anything away from it, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of big feelings here yeah. at the motherhood department. <laughs> well, we have to wrap up. Yeah, we have to wrap up, guys. Maybe we do this again. We could do our question. Oh, right. What What makes you extra lucky? What makes you extra... What makes you extra lucky? Okay. Um, uh, I just got a tattoo that says extra lucky because extra lucky to me is a way of life. It's a way of looking at life. Extra lucky, when we, to be perfectly frank, started extra lucky moms was about our kids. And it's morphed into this unbelievable mission and movement. And... I am extra lucky to be able to lead it alongside you yeah. and to, you know, be an advocate for those that don't have all of the opportunities that I have been gifted with. I'm very humbled to be extra lucky. And I'm so extra lucky to be Adeline's mom. Yeah. And, my, and Charlie's mom and Matt's wife. But, you know, extra yeah. lucky is, it came from Addie. You know, she's the reason I'm awakened. Right. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that's what I would say is like the cliche, you know, being Raya's mom because of the fact that I feel like she's opened up this purpose, mm-hmm. but she's also made me a better mom to Sophia, Layla, and Genevieve too. Yes. The way that I can look at things with them and approach things with them is so much different. Right. And I just don't know if any of that perspective would have been there if I hadn't had Raya. I would challenge it would not. Yeah. There's. It's like when people are like, you know, you're going to be so tired when you become a mom. Yeah. And you just can't understand, you won't right. ever understand just how tired you will be until you have a baby and have a newborn and you're, that you're taking care of. Yeah. You're on the clock. Right. You just can't imagine it. 
And I think that that's what our kids have done. They've literally pulled the rug from out from under us and given us this whole new set of glasses on mm-hmm. life. Yeah. And we see things so differently now. Yeah. So thank you, girls. We love you. Mamas love you. <laughs> well, thank you to everybody for listening. Don't forget, if you would like to support Alicia, um, you can use code ELM25 for 25% off anything on their website. And by the time this airs, their spring collection will be out. So and we've seen it. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So um, if this episode resonated with you, especially since it's our first one, please share please it. Share it. Share it. Yes. Uh, share it on social. We would love you for that. Yes. Um, this love you anyway, but please share. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this really helps us spread the message of the Extra Lucky Life. So thank you so much for listening. Thanks, guys.